Here I am on the streets of Bagan, my first day here. I arrived uh, around noon yesterday, taking the train up from Yangon. And I spent uh, the rest of the day yesterday just uh, relaxing at my uh, guest house. I've been told by a number of people that it really is the low season now. And I'm seeing evidence of that everywhere. Not uh, many foreigners here right now. And I tried to book a boat to take me from Bagan to Mandalay. And I was told that no boats are running. There just aren't enough people to take them. And there was some concern that the rivers, the water in the rivers wasn't high enough. So the boats uh, can run right now anyway. So that's kind of disappointing. I was looking forward to a, uh, a boat trip on top of my uh, train trip to uh, come up here. I think the thing to do in Bagan, in the Bagan area, is to rent an e-bike and go out exploring in the countryside and see as many of the famous pagodas here as uh, you can. But I think I'm going to do that tomorrow or the day after, uh, rent an e-bike and head out exploring. For today, I'm just going to walk around the town of Nyong U itself. And apparently there's quite a large pagoda right here in town. And I'm standing uh, right in front of the entrance called the Shwezigon Pagoda, Shwedigon Pagoda. And uh, since I'm this close to it, I'm going to uh, walk in its direction and uh, check it out. This uh, sign has the name of the pagoda on it. You can see it there, Shwezigon Pagoda. I believe it's about a thousand years old, 1100 years old. But of course, when you talk about the age of these pagodas, you're really talking about the year when it was founded. And since that time, of course, it's been worn out, rebuilt, lots of it has been replaced. And there was a lot of damage done to it during an earthquake. And after the earthquake, I think most of it was again rebuilt. So even though the pagoda itself dates back over a thousand years, the structure itself, you know, what you end up looking at today is probably uh, quite a bit uh, younger than that. But uh, even so, let's go check it out. And I think this uh, covered walkway behind me leads directly to the pagoda. And I think once you enter this walkway, you're technically in the pagoda grounds, so you have to remove your uh, shoes even to walk uh, through there. So. Just to be on the safe side, I'll remove my sandals as I head into this uh, covered walkway and walk towards the uh, pagoda. So here is the walkway towards the pagoda. I think there are three or four of these walkways so you can walk towards the pagoda from many different directions. And there are my uh, bare feet. Luckily, this structure is outside. It was covered from the sun. So uh, it's not as burning hot as my other uh, pagoda experiences in Myanmar have been. I still haven't purchased my ticket for the archaeological zone. I talked to a couple of other foreigners here and they told me that uh, you can actually buy this ticket at a lot of the uh, big pagodas. And there's the sign up there to remind you that foot wearing is strictly prohibited which I guess is a, like footwear wearing. A lot of souvenir stalls here, wood carvings and crafts for sale. It's pretty low key though. I've walked along quite a lot of these shops and uh, no one has approached me or asked me to uh, buy anything. Hello. Hello. Canada. Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, no, thank you. 
Yeah. Oh. I'm gonna go look at the pagoda. Yeah, inside beautiful. Beautiful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I give blessing for you. This is lucky for you. You mm. many, you many. For it's you, for okay. You. No, no, thank no, you. you don't give it's blessing. okay. Mm. You can keep it for the next person. What is your name? Douglas. Douglas. My name is Dindin. Dindin. Nice Did to meet you. Did you see a souvenir? No. Shopping. No, thank you. It's okay. There's the main uh, stupa of the pagoda, and this is one of the giant uh, protective lions guarding this entrance to the uh, pagoda. I found the desk where you're supposed to buy your <coughs> ticket for the Bagan Archaeological Zone. So you could buy it here, but there isn't uh, anyone at the desk. I'm inside the grounds of the uh, pagoda. You can see the main stupa behind me there. It's very quiet here midday. I usually end up at these places in the middle of the day, so there, isn't a, there aren't a lot of people. I'm told that the whole stupa is lit up at night with some uh, spotlights and it looks quite nice at that time, so I could return then. It's not as bad as my other pagoda experiences in terms of how hot the stone is in the middle of the day, but it is pretty hot. So I'm glad to see this little pool of uh, water and cool my, cool my feet a little bit. And here's quite a large gong. Around this stupa, they've laid down some red matting, again because the stone gets so hot underneath the sun. And this matting is quite nice because it's uh, like an actual carpet, not plastic. Uh, it doesn't really bite into your feet like at other places I've been. So you can walk around the whole stupa in uh, some comfort. Looks like a lot of these structures on the outside are being uh, renovated being repaired and fixed up. Can't think of any, any other reason why it would be uh, covered up in these uh, rattan mats. And there's the stupa there. And as with most of the stupas, it's a, sol it's a solid structure. That's how they're described online. So you can't actually go inside them like you can at that uh, one pagoda in uh, Yangon. A number of the, uh, the large pagodas in Yangon were said to have hairs of the Buddha there and they are kept as holy relics um, at the pagoda. Here apparently they have a piece of the skull and a tooth from the Buddha and those are uh, the holy relics of this pagoda. I believe there are nine wonders associated with this pagoda. I can't remember them all, but they're things like the shadow is quite unique. No matter where the sun is, the shadow is always the same. Plus they say that if you drop a piece of 
foil from the top of the uh, stupa, it will never fall outside the limits of the uh, pagoda. Things like that, sort of uh, wonderful properties of this pagoda. Apparently there are uh, nine of them. I just came out of this uh, exit from the pagoda complex and I picked it out because it seemed to be near the river, the Irrawaddy River. I thought I'd uh, come down here and see what the river looks like. As I said earlier, I was hoping to take a boat from Bagan to Mandalay and uh, I found out this morning, at least I only spoke to one person so far but he told me that the boats aren't running right now. There just aren't enough uh, tourists here right now. They uh, don't have enough passengers for the boat. And they won't start up again until uh, October, he said. Well, there goes a boat down the river. It would be fun to ride on that one, but I think it would take a long time to get to Mandalay at the, at the pace he's going. Here's the river. And I've got a, a river dog. Hey there, Pooch. Mm. Uh, let's see where this trail goes. And this is where the trail led to, just down to the uh, river bank. Ah, the current out there is uh, looking pretty fast. So it's not surprising that boat is having such a hard time making any headway upriver. There's an imposing figure guarding the entrance from the river up to the pagoda. I'm now just going for a walk kind of around the pagoda down by the riverside or as close to it as I can get on the roads. I don't have a lot to say, not a lot of thoughts going on, just out exploring a bagon. I've been seeing pagodas and uh, stupas like this all around this area as I walk around. I like them a lot. I like these old uh, brick ones better than the gilded ones all covered in gold. This little trail is going downhill, so I think it's going back close to the riverside. I'm not sure if uh, it dead ends down here. Hello. Uh, there's the river. Oh. And here you get out into the sun again, and it gets pretty hot. I think that's the same boat out there that I saw earlier. Hasn't made much progress. That's as far as it got. Bit of a garbage dump down here. A lot of the riversides tend to end up that way. They're uh, building a, a new house here. Yeah, I don't think this trail along the river goes very far, so I think this is probably as far as I'm going to get. 
have to just uh, turn around and go back up into this uh, village area. I can go that way or this way. I think I'll head down here and see where it goes. I've noticed that uh, a lot of the local people are uh, sleeping. It's kind of a uh, siesta time for them, the middle of the hot afternoon. And that's when I go out exploring. <laughs> Whoa, there's quite a sight. I wasn't expecting that. It's like one of these older uh, brick pagodas, but quite a large one. I'll turn the camera around. Oh, I didn't even know that was there. I think I'll have to pull out my phone and uh, see if I can find the name of it uh, a little bit later. Oh, kind of a dead end. I think that just heads into private property. I have to backtrack. I like how they made this fencing here. It's just a th slits of uh, bamboo and then they just braid it through other bamboo and they just make themselves a little uh, piece of fencing. You don't even have to leave the uh, town limits on your e-bike to see a lot of uh, pagodas. I was on my way to this uh, large uh, brick one over there that I spotted and I'm passing by this uh, other one. It's all painted uh, white. I don't think I'm going to go in. I'm just going to uh, take a look through the gate here. And there it is. Very nice. Here's that uh, large brick and stone pagoda that I spotted from a distance. And according to Google Maps, it's called Thatse Mokgu Hapaya, or something like that. <clears throat> At the moment, it's home to a lot of uh, pigeons occupying the upper levels there. I was greeted by a bunch of uh, barking wild dogs when I first got here. <laughs> Let's see if they'll let me uh, walk around it. I've noticed that it, near all of the pagodas, you find uh, large piles of bricks like this. So I think all of them are uh, slowly being uh, rebuilt and restored. To go along with the rise of uh, tourism in Myanmar, because a lot of these uh, pagodas are being fixed up. Hello. Hello. I spotted this structure and I was puzzled for a minute about what it was and then I realized it's the other long covered entrance that takes you to Shwezigon Pagoda, <clears throat> the big one that I went to at the very beginning of this walk. I saw this on uh, Google Maps originally 
and I thought it would be filled with uh, stores and uh, places selling souvenirs. I guess the souvenir shops start to down in that direction. The funny thing is, the, is that if I was walking inside there, inside this structure, I'd have to take my sandals off and walk barefoot. But if I walk on the outside of it, like I'm uh, doing here, I can leave my uh, sandals on and <laughs> it ends up being a lot more comfortable. It's funny, I think back to my uh, childhood, I swear from the day school let out until the day school let back in again in the fall, I was running around either in sandals or barefoot. I was probably barefoot, I don't know, 70% of the summer. My feet must have been a lot tougher when I was a kid because I, I couldn't do that now. When I, even the short time I walk around these pagodas in my bare feet, my feet really start to hurt just walking on the smooth stone. I guess uh, you get used to it over time. And I'm certainly not used to it right now. I got baby feet, baby sensitive feet. And here are the majestic lions protecting this entrance to the pagoda. I don't know where I am or where I'm going exactly. Still just walking around the uh, streets of, uh, I guess this is Nyong U. It's a very pleasant place, really, when you uh, think about it, because there's really no traffic other than the occasional motorcycle. And you get lots of uh, trees covering these roads, so you get some shade to walk down, to walk under some shade. And I think the river is off to my left, down there somewhere. My guest house is uh, behind me in that direction, a couple of kilometers. Yeah, I miss uh, my bicycle a little bit. This is the kind of area I'd be exploring on my bike normally. And I'd normally be uh, taking pictures. I'd just walk around with my camera and take pictures. But since I started uh, shooting more video, kind of stopped taking pictures. So sometimes I don't know what to do with myself. I appear to have reached downtown Young U. Just a lot of, uh, you know, typical local shops. A lot more uh, traffic here. On my way back to my guest house now after my walk around Yang U. And I thought I would relax today with a cold Myanmar beer. It's been a long time actually since I've even had a beer. So that should be, uh, that should be nice. Cheers to a uh, hot day. Mm. It's good, but any beer that is ice cold is good, and this was a very cold. One interesting thing is that as I was walking around, I spotted a place that was selling tickets on this boat that goes from Bagan to Mandalay. The other places I spoke with, they said that there were no boats at all it was because it's the low season. But they said they just started running again and they do have boats. So I'll have to see whether it makes sense for me to take a boat and um, see if they are going on a day that is convenient for me. But anyway, that's good news that there is a boat if I want to go that way. It costs $27 US. It's quite a nice boat, you know, it's kind of a luxury deal with breakfast and lunch and, and that sort of thing included. So it's a lot more expensive than taking a bus or even the train, but it might be nice to do. We'll see. I'm heading back to my guest house after my walk around uh, Nyong U. Yeah, it's actually uh, quite an interesting little town. I enjoyed my uh, stroll around despite the heat. The, uh, it's the rainy season, so it's supposed to be cooler now than it was before. So 
I can't imagine how hot it was during the uh, heat wave when I was uh, down in uh, Yangon. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm about to uh, head back into my guest house. Thought I'd give you a, a little glimpse of it from the outside called the Golden Rose Guest House. <clears throat> and there it is there. It has the nice uh, rooftop dining area at the top. I find that it's a little bit far away from the center for my liking. I think I'd prefer to be in a guest house more in the downtown area, but it's still okay being out here. There it is, the Golden Rose. <laughs> 